Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to show you how to convert an HL7 message into a JSON file. Uh, this video assumes that you've got some knowledge of HL7, so if you don't, I suggest you have a look at my what is HL7 tutorial first, and then head back here for the nitty gritty. So let's begin. We have a sample HL7 file over on the left, and a sample of what the JSON file will look like once we've finished. Both have a similar hierarchical structure, but they are not related formats. The bad news is that there's no auto-magical conversion between these formats. We're going to need to map them. I'm going to show you how to set up an automatic conversion, so all you need to do is drop an HR7 file into a directory, and it spits out a JSON file. And this is all super simple because we've got the world's best software to do it, which of course is HL7 Soup's integration host. There's a 30 day free trial, so you can do all this too. Better yet, if you're training, teaching, or really just want to have a play, there's also a free development license you can sign up for. It never expires, you just can't use it for live data. Take your pick which license you want to follow along with. So here it is, this is the integration host. The main screen is the dashboard used to monitor your conversions, but first we need to create a conversion. We just right click on the left hand panel and select new to load up the workflow designer and define our conversion. There's so much you can do with the workflow designer that goes well beyond the scope of this video. Uh, you can connect all sorts of medical hardware and software together, TCP, web services, database, all that sort of stuff. If you'd like to know a little bit more about that, take a look at our Getting Started tutorials in the link at the top right of the video. But for this video, we're going to just dive right in. So if you recall, we're going to convert from an HL7 file to a JSON file. So we're going to first of all need to pick up that file. And I'm going to scan for that file. And I'm going to call this step get HL7 file. And I'm going to search for a in a directory for a file. And I'm going to have it in C HL7 to JSON example. So I'm going to just put that in as my directory. And we are looking for HL7 files, so that filter is already correct. Uh, we are going to set it to wait for more files to be added. That just means it will keep processing as the files are added. And once the file is being processed, we're going to delete it. Uh, we could move it to another directory, but there's no need to do that for this. Uh, the message type that we've got coming in is an HL7 file. And finally, we need a message template. Now, the message template is just an example of what that message is going to look like. Uh, so I actually have this one, which I prepared earlier. This is just taken from the HL7 Soup Editor's sample files. And I'll paste it in here. Uh, the reason I have it is it's got uh, PID information and a little bit of OBX data. And we're going to use that to show the simple and perhaps a slightly more complicated conversion as well. So you can see now I've pasted it in, we've got a tree over on this right hand panel. This represents the HL7 message we can see in the message template. You'll notice if I click on an item inside the tree, it highlights the exact same place in the message template. Vice versa, if I click on something in the message template, it highlights back in the tree. And there's also the search message one. And that's handy because we won't always be able to see the message template as we're working through this. Another thing that's helpful to notice is as you move your mouse over the HL7 message, you automatically get a highlight of where you are inside the message so you can easily find what you're looking at. Okay, so right now we have the message coming in. We need to write it to another directory. So I add another activity and we're going to make this a file writer as well. I'll call this create JSON. File. And so now I have to give it a file name and path. Uh, I want to write it out to this out directory. I'm just going to paste that in to help me out. And then I just need to give it a file name. And I'd kind of like to have that file name sort of self generate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the message type that was passed into us. So that's the, uh, if you know your HR7, this is the MSH 9.1. I'm just going to drag that message type into the file name and let it go there. And that's created what's called a variable that's going to be replaced at runtime with the actual message type that that message was. And then just to make it unique as well, I'm just going to right click on it and say insert the variable 
and I'm just going to put the current date time in as well and then dot JSON. Uh, I just also want to give that current date time a specific format. Um, actually the HR7 dates are really good for that format there. That, that, that file format is really good for writing out file names because it's got no funny characters in it. So we'll just use that. Terrific. Okay, so we've got our file name created. Uh, now the maximum records per file. Now this is a JSON file, so that you just change that to one. Uh, you, you're going to have a unique file for each record that we write out. Uh, do we need to write it to an, move it to another directory after processing? No. Again, that's if you have some sort of locking issues. Message type. We're going to write it out as a JSON file. And now we just need a message template. Um, and I'm going to... I've got, I've got an actual, I've got a cut down version of our JSON file uh, that I'm going to start with. I just wanted to show you the sort of basics before we go on to the more complicated things. So you can see in this JSON file, there's a patient with the ID, first name and last name, and there's some sample values in there currently. Um, we can actually replace those values with the variables just like we did in the file name. So with that ID, I can navigate to the patient's ID and I just drag that into the message and delete out that sample value. Um, I'll just get rid of all those values. We don't want them. And same with the rest of the stuff. So I get the patient's family name. It maps to the last name. Uh, the patient's given name, which maps to their first name. And finally, their date of birth. And I drag that in there. Great. Uh, with the date of birth, we are going to want to format that again. Oh, didn't mean to replace it. We want to format it. And I don't want it as an HR7 date. I kind of want this. This is going to go to .NET. So uh, I have that .NET date format for me. Okay, simple. So that's mapped those two together. I'm going to name this workflow and it's going to be called hl7 to json con converter and that's done so i'm just going to hit the save and close button here and if we navigate now back to the integration host we will see that this converter is sitting there running uh, ready to go and it's processed zero messages so far so let's test it out on our very sort of simple conversion. So I'm going to go into my example folder. I've prepared some files already. Um, I've got that sample HL7 file just sitting here. So I'm going to copy the file and I'm just going to drop it into this directory for processing. And we should see it vanish. Our system needs to catch up. There we go. Uh, you can see it's processed that one message. So if we now look in the out directory, we're hoping to see a JSON file, which is great. And I'll load that up in Notepad. And you can see it's got the ID. First name is John, last name is Smith. It's got the date of birth in the right format. So that's worked perfectly fine. Great. So that is a very simple example of how to convert from HR7 to JSON. Let's make this a little bit more complicated now. And what I'll do is I'll go back to my original file that I had on the screen. So you'll see it's got the same stuff that we've already done. The ID, the first name, last name. Um, and it's also got a group of results. Uh, and that's going to make things a bit more complicated. And I will show you why. And so I'm going to take that results section and I'm just going to copy that back to the integration host. Double click on that conversion to read it the workflow and head over to the second step and we're just going to append the result section into the message so now we've got the full message uh, we've still got our variables here uh, bound in uh, and as you can see what we need to do is we need to produce multiple items so there's multiple results one two three um, and we need to get those out of here uh, We've got our OBX results. Those are what we want to get in. You'll notice that there's four of them here. 
and there's three of them here. If, if it happened to be exactly the same thing, I could just continue mapping like I already was. But in actual fact, this here could have any number of results in it, right? So we don't know, so we're going to have to build those results as we go. So what we know is going to be, cons we're actually going to do this via string manipulation. So what we're going to do is build this kind of section here over and over and we'll be inserting those into the message. So I'm just going to start by copying one of those and now we're going to head into what's called the transformers. So transformers are basically the steps to convert from one message type to another. And on this left-hand panel, we've got all the source conversions and the, and the oops, sorry, on the left-hand panel, we've got all the source values and the right-hand panel, we've got the destination message. We could have actually done the mappings earlier in here. We could just take the patient ID and drag it to the patient ID in that message. And it creates a binding between those two. But we're not going to use that technique because of the complexities I'm about to show you. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to try and loop over all the OBX values that are in this message. So in order to do that, I click on the bottom transformer. So I'm at the, the bottom and I'm going to add a new one. And they add just below the highlighted one. So I go for each. Uh, and that's because we want, so we're going to loop over the OBX. So I'm going to grab one of those OBX values and I'm just going to grab the header of it and drag it into the source path. Okay, now that's effectively saying I'm going to loop over all the OBX values. And just something to watch for here, and I've seen people make this mistake before, there's two options here. Um, if you actually, the, the, the green one is what it's bound to, so it's actually bound to that message from that first activity. If text and variables were selected, you'll notice that the text would be would be blue, uh, that means it's a literal OBX value, so you're not going to have any luck looping. So if, you're, if your text is green, uh, you've probably made a bit of a mistake. Could have been because you typed it, that's fine. But just make sure you change it to the, the actual activity value, okay? Okay, so now we're going to loop over that. Uh, we now need to get out the values, okay? So we have a, a device, an observation, and a value. Um, in my message, I'm going to be taking out, as the device will be, the uh, one of these observation identifier values. So I just want that. So I'll just drag that in. Uh, I'm going to take out the text. I'm going to use that as the observation. And I want the value as well, which is OBX5. So I'll bring that in. Okay, so what's that doing here? That's going to loop over all the all the OBXs and it's going to populate these values. And you'll note that it just says the OBX 3.1. So because it's in a for each, what that's going to do behind the scenes is effectively it's going to it's going to put it an iterator on it. So at the first loop, it's going to be the OBX1. Second, it's going to be OBX2. Third, it's going to be OBX3. It's just going to replace that automatically for you. Uh, make sure you don't actually have any uh, iterator brackets in there because if you do, uh, it's going to use them uh, precisely. So it only replaces them if it's not defined inside the actual message path, which is the default incidentally when you drop them in. So there's no worries there. And of course, so these are now in variables uh, and we can add these variables back into that text. So in order to do that, we need to create another variable and I'll add it below this one and I'll go set variable value and I'm going to call this variable result. And into that, I'm going to add in that text that I grabbed from the message, the destination message. If I click on that, I can actually see that message again. I'm just going to grab it again because I don't trust my copying. I go copy click back on there and paste that into the source path and now I just need to replace these bits of text so the mid one I said I was going to use that variable called identifier uh, for the observation I will use the identified text and for the value I'm going to use the observation value. 
Okay, so that's mapped together. Um, so now it's going to loop over and it's going to build up this text. Um, but of course that would put the same value again into the same variable. So we want to make sure it appends to it. So what we do is we just put the values that are currently in that variable first. So I just go to that. So what it's going to do is add the new result to whatever results we already have. Okay, so that's going to build up a list. And then it's going to have a comma after each one. Okay, now that's that's good for JSON, except for the very last one. If you've got a comma in the very last one, uh, JSON doesn't like that, okay? So I'm going to be a bit cheeky here, and I'm actually going to use a little bit of code. Um, please forgive me. I will give you this code. Not everyone likes to use code, I know, but for some things, it's actually just the fastest and easiest way. So what I want to say is... I'm going to do a new condition and say if the result is not empty, because we don't want to do this if there was no result records. If the result is not empty, run some code. So we will insert some code. Okay, now it's given you a whole lot of code by default. This is just sample code. Um, if I click the editor, it's a bit easier to read. It's all you get all the color, uh, you get all the color coding and everything. Um, but what we can do is extract out the little bits of code that we want. Uh, and so there's an example here of how they get a variable value, uh, and there's one of set the variable value. Okay, so those are the two that we want. Um, and so my value is called result. So I'm just going to create a variable called results. And it's grabbing the value called results. OK, and then we're going to take that value. And we're going to reset itself again. Uh, oh, doesn't matter if it's not capital, so it doesn't matter. Uh, And paste it in, and it's result dot substring. Notice I get all the IntelliSense and everything, which is really helpful. Uh, Standing index zero comma result dot length minus one. Okay, very really simple stuff for you coders out there. Again, for those who can't code, not a problem. I will leave a link to this. All this is saying is get the result out of the variable, and then set that variable's value to be a substring of that message and that the length of it is one character less. So it's just going to remove that last character in the message, which will be the comma. Okay, nice and easy. It only removes, of course, the last instance of the comma. That's that's the idea. So, okay, I think that's almost it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that now and show you it again. This is actually going to error, and uh, but I do want to show you errors. So let me find my sample files again, and I'll explain to you why it errors in a second, but let's just make it happen. So we'll bring up this so we, we can actually watch it happening, and I'll paste it in here, and we should see the count go up. Okay. Oh, and it worked. Okay, something went wrong. Great. Let's have a look. Here's our outbound message. The reason it didn't error is because I didn't actually do it correctly. The one thing I forgot to do was actually replace these values here. I'll delete those. And I wanted to put in my variable for results. Okay? We want to write out those result values. So I'll hit save and close. And let's try that again. This time it'll error. So, paste it in there. And straight away you can see things are going a bit hectic. Lots of attempts, lots of failures. I'm just going to go stop on this. We don't want it to keep running. And I'm just going to quickly refresh here so you can see the logs. So I intentionally wanted to show you the logs. Very helpful if things are going wrong because you can have a look at the error. And you'll see the message here. It actually gives us instructions of what we've done wrong. Uh, this is a limitation of... of JSON, the message type, it's very strict on not putting funny characters into the JSON message when it's when it's building that message. So what we have to do is we just have to edit it. 
it's really simple go to the second activity and change the message type from json to text we lose all that nice coloring uh, but it's converted it now to a flat file so it's no longer going to be parsed by the runtime engine which means it doesn't mind the fact that it's got this random field sitting in the middle of the text it didn't mind it incidentally for these other ones here because they're inside the quotes so that's fine it doesn't corrupt the json syntax but this dollar sign here did so that's why it's telling us to convert it to text. Uh, that's also why I said earlier, don't do the direct mappings in the transformers for HR7 to JSON, um, because we, I knew I was going to have to convert that JSON message type to a plain text, uh, to which you can't do the bindings between the message types because it doesn't understand those message types. Okay, so now I've got that correct. I'm going to save and close it again. Uh, I don't want all this junk, so I'm just going to clear out all the statistics. Okay, no more messages here, no errors showing. Um, oh, I can just start it up. And it's processed. And we've had one success. So I'm just going to refresh the logs and have a look. And here is our created JSON file. And it has created the four value, so it's not just the three that the sample message had, and it's populated all the fields correctly, and we've got all the other values. So that's worked really well, so that's got the entire conversion going. So incidentally, this message log that you have here, it shows about the last thousand messages, give or take, and that's useful for diagnosing any problems that you might have. Uh, another thing that you might want to consider, keeping in mind that this is a JSON file. Why do you want a JSON file? It might be that you didn't want to write it out as a file, uh, perhaps you were better off actually sending that off to perhaps a, an HTTP sender uh, or a web service sender. Let me just drag that, copy that, change that to HTTP sender. And here's our message again, I'll populate that. Uh, and we can use all this, we'll populate a URL and, and all the stuff, post it off, we'll again make it text. Uh, and then you could get a response. So this is a way it could call your web services or what have you. I haven't actually got a web service or anything that I can call, but I just wanted to give you an idea that that's possible. It doesn't just have to be spat out as a file. So hopefully that's helpful for someone. And also, did you know that integration hosts UI is all open source? We've got a tutorial showing you how to get this great UI and functionality directly into your products. Theme it up any way you like. And also, if this video has helped you, then why not return the favour, give us a like, and maybe let us know in the comments what future videos you'd like us to produce. And of course, click the subscribe button and maybe even ring the bell. Thank you.